I am joined by Bridie Woodward, uh, Director of Content Protein, uh, Kat Biles, who's Communications Director and General Factotum for the Homeless World Cup, and uh, Vida Toomes, uh, Head of Content for uh, VBS, Vice Broadcasting Services, and Virtue. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about, is any, are, are you all members of Shooting People? Yes. Oh yes, 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 yeah, good. Um, now it says here in the brochure, uh, and I feel like affecting in some kind of voice, but uh, with the seemingly diminishing value of television and print advertising, brand marketeers are looking for new ways to engage audiences, and producers of factual content are keen to explore new opportunities through brand partnerships. The good, the brand and the ugly session unites documentary filmmakers with agencies, charities and brands, demystifying the new multi-partnership model and exposing expectations and funded examples through case studies and discussion. And by way of reassuring you that we're going to have quite a bit more fun uh, than that paragraph uh, <laughs> leads us to believe, um, we have a little clip. By the way, if anyone here is in advertising or marketing, kill yourself. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thanks. Just a little thought. I'm just trying to plant seeds. And maybe, maybe one day they'll take root. I don't know. You try. You do what you can. Kill yourself. Seriously, though, if you are, do. Uh, no, really. There's no rationalization for what you do, and you are Satan's little helpers, okay? Kill yourself, seriously. You're the ruiner of all things good. Seriously. No, I'm, this is not a joke. You're gonna, it's going to be a joke coming. There's no fucking joke coming. You are Satan's spawn, filling the world with bile and garbage. You are fucked, and you are fucking us. Kill yourself. It's the only way to save your fucking soul. Kill yourself. today uh, is we're not talking about how Channel 4 sells um, packages to advertisers so that you end up with Volkswagen and ads in between documentaries and indeed um, advertising is online. So we're not doing any of that um, sort of standard uh, uh, telly stuff. And the other thing that we're, we're, we're not doing is talking about, which I do a lot of work with, is talking about short film upload competitions powered by brands. We do a lot of work uh, with um, sometimes just as a marketing services agency at shooting people um, and sometimes building them ourselves and we charge uh, brands for uh, film upload. There's a, a whole raft of those um, companies out there and indeed that's another whole um, panel discussion um, and have a poodle about on um, shooting people if you want to learn more or if you're for a filmmaker thinking about spending some of your time doing that and lots of people do. No. So what, we, what we're going to do now is your, each of you in turn is going to spend uh, half a minute or so just telling everybody who you are and what you do in more detail than I just did. Okay. And then we'll come back to you, Bridie, and, and go into Protein in more detail. Okay. Hi, I'm Bridie. Um, I work at Protein, which is um, a creative agency. Um, we work with brands in a variety of different ways. We get briefs in and uh, treat each brief with a response, which is the most relevant. So that could be an event, a film, or a marketing campaign, uh, online marketing campaign. Um, we have uh, a network of um, online publications, which spans globally, uh, which is the majority of our business. And including including shooting Babel people, Gum, shooting people um, one dot zero. Yeah. Uh, it's across lots of verticals. So we have fashion, art and design, film, more recently food, science, technology, um, and so through that we serve over two hundred million impressions. So we have a wide network, um, which in a way is the currency of the company. Grant. Thanks. Kat, hi. Welcome. Thank you. So I'm Kat. I'm the communications director with the Homeless World Cup. And we are a social enterprise that uses football to help people who are homeless change their lives. So we do that with a World Cup each year. Um, the last one was just in Rio in September. And we had 64 countries, um, national teams of homeless players come and um, 
during the year they're all training, they come off drugs, alcohol, get jobs, move in um, homes, move, move into education, set up their own businesses. So it's really using it as a tool to, to change their lives. And um, that's a pretty amazing story. So my job is to, is to tell that story and we do that with through various ways, one of which is with a documentary strategy. Um, we've got a, we have partnerships with people like Nike, UEFA, um, Vodafone, and we get involved with those brands um, with their storytelling budgets as well um, to, get the, to get the story out there with the aim of obviously inspiring people to use football to change lives but also to change perceptions of homelessness. Great, thank you very much. Vida Toombs, hello. Hi, I'm Vida from Vice. Um, you might not have heard of Vice, so I'm going to hopefully tell you a little bit more Who about has? that. Anyone? Yes. The rest of you, you're over 40. In the bar last night, nobody had heard of us at all, so um, I'm relieved to hear that. So we're a magazine, um, we're a publisher, we're a media company, we have an online TV channel called VBS TV, and we also have an agency um, which provides brand solutions, which is what I'm going to be sort of talking a bit about today. Um, so I head up all the production for Europe, um, most our, our head office is in London, uh, so yeah, I look after after productions for VBS and the branded content series and productions that we do. If there was a uh, East London hipster creative business Olympics, uh, Vice and Protein would be in the middles. Um, so let's talk about Protein. Now you've got a presentation. Do you want to play that first? How, yeah, do, you, how um, do you want to do it? Can we play the show reel? Can we have the Protein show reel? And give us make some kind of affirmative sounding noise when you're ready. Just as oh, no. oh. Where should, we, where should we begin? Are you um, well, there's a variety of projects on there, and we kind of had different involvement in all of them. Um, so we produce content, and we've just opened a producers network. So we're quite interested in hearing from people um, that have content that when we get in briefs, we can recommend um, directors and producers to our clients. Um, we also market content and films. So recently Nike came to us with the film Cadencia and we put together a marketing and distribution plan for them. Um, so they had the film, they made the film? They, yeah, they commissioned Darren Bartlett, who is a documentary filmmaker, to go to Brazil. Um, they gave him a budget to do mm -hmm. so. Uh, he went out there, he made the film. It was to promote their World Cup campaign. Um, it wasn't heavily branded or anything like that. And it was actually not really what you would expect from a branded documentary. It was quite sort of dreamy and ethereal mm -hmm. and quite a beautiful film. And um, Nike didn't really have an understanding of how to get this film out there. They made it. So we helped them. We did a series of events. We did a premiere, invited press, got film publicity for it um, and we distributed it for them. We had plans for um, a sort of large scale international theatrical release but we found that the brand hadn't sort of thought of that early on enough and we came in at a bit too much of a late stage which is something I think is a kind of learning in branded content. Um, 
that had we got in earlier, we could have done the whole overall structure. Um, Will Rowe, who owns Protein, and my background is in film marketing and distribution originally. So this is also what we're looking to do a bit more of. Um, and in, in that series of events that you produced for Nike, for Cadencia, Nike was happy? What were the sort of things that went well that made them happy? They were really happy because we did an amazing party. <laughs> um, <laughs> we did an amazing premiere. We got press coverage which Nike wouldn't usually be exposed to. Right. Um, so we got film critics writing about the film. Um, and Nike was seen in a slightly different light, I think. Yeah. Uh, we did end up putting the film out through VBS and through Babelgum, which was picked up internationally. I think it, the film was ended up being seen in 34 countries online, um, which I don't think they had those sort of expectations when they commissioned the film. But it sounds like they didn't really know what they were doing when they commissioned the film. No, I don't think they did. They just wanted something pretty. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and from Darren's point of view, Darren made films in Brazil. That's what he... his. That's what he does. Um, so he, you know, got to continue doing that with some brand money. And even though there was no revenue coming in in terms of DVD sales or box office revenue, um, the money sort of came in from a different way. And yeah, everyone was happy. Good. Um, I'm going to come back and ask you about cars and booze in a minute. But okay. uh, for now, let's. Um, so as to make the panel seem seamless, uh, let's take Nike and, and come to you, Kat, <laughs> and tell us about uh, the, the nature of their support for the Homeless World Cup and what it's like working with them. Mm, it's, um, it's been a relationship that's um, evolved over 10 years. So um, we got involved with Nike when the Homeless World Cup was just a crazy idea, and um, they've supported it um, and as, as it's grown. And... Um, I, th I guess at the time they, you know, they were going through their human rights um, issues of sweatshops and things like that, and they've been on an incredible journey over the last 10, 15 years. They've completely transformed their business model, um, and it's been a great privilege, I think, to work alongside them. So when when we first started, they didn't want any branding. They didn't want us to be impacted in any negative way. Um, so it was just, it was almost a silent partnership. And that's grown and grown and grown, and now um, you know they have a storytelling budget that they use to invest in our, yeah, with us. And each, you know, every year we discuss whether that's going to be in a short film or um, this in Rio, for example, we just made a, a promo, um, and or it's going to be a documentary which we might do next year, for example. So they're now using their storytelling budget to tell our story, and they they distribute that through Nike Football or. Um, and we work together, so... For the so who, who holds the strings of the storytelling budget? Is this like the corporate relations team or the marketing team? It's or social, the, the social CSR, innovation, social um, innovation. Team. So they, you know, they're, they're the people that we work with um, in Portland. And they hold the budget. Um, but it really is a side-by-side -side partnership. So, you know, we, we both discuss what, you know, our objectives are and um, it... They use that money to um, enable the Homeless World Cup to advance um, and progress and become more sustainable as an organisation. That's their objective. Great. Now tell me how you use film. Oh, we, use, um, we use film really to tell the, I mean, the story of the Homeless World Cup and the, the journey, the players that go, they go on, um, is absolutely amazing. Each one goes on their own hero's journey, you know, from the streets to representing their country on a global stage. So, you know, they go through they face the worst of themselves and the best of themselves and it's, it's incredibly emotional and that makes for, I mean it is, it is a human story that, you know, it's, um, it, it's be a beautiful story. So um, we want to tell that story and we, and we use that story um, to really change the perceptions of homelessness because, you know, we all are guilty of thinking a homeless person is someone on the streets with a can of special brew that, you know, is a bit of a pain in the arse. And that's, that's absolutely not the case. It's about one billion people are homeless in the world today for all various reasons. You know, it might be, well, I mean, we've just seen the earthquake in Haiti, or it might be due to poverty, or, um, you know, your father beats you up, so you have to leave home. Um, so we use documentaries to change um, perceptions. Um, and 
We've made about 40, I think, now, um, some of which we've been involved in directly. One made it to Sundance, which okay. was brilliant. Um, and so they're not long-form promos? <laughs> no? No. And how do you avoid that? How do we avoid...? Making long ads for your initiative. <laughs> Um, really by focusing on the players and, um, you know, their lives um, and what they, you know, what they're going through. Um, and then, you know, the Homeless World Cup, the football tournament is just part of that. Um, but, you know, you see them in St. Petersburg trying to deal with their daily lives. Mm. You see them in the slums of Nairobi. You see them in the favelas of Brazil. And then they all come together at the tournament. Yeah. So. And it happens... The similar time every year, the yeah, tournament? Yeah, pretty much, September. So is your job then quite seasonal? Pretty much. I mean, you, you get into a, a, you know, a cycle of you know, commissioning um, the documentary crews. Yeah, what sort of time of the year and when can they come in? <laughs> um, normally, it's, uh, we sort of look at documentary uh, crews around about October time. And then, because um, the whole sort of selection process starts in January, um, and then, the, you know, you follow the player up until uh, the tournament, which is in September, and then for a little while afterwards. So, so you you're making see. one documentary per participating territory? Um, quite. Is that the idea? That's the idea. Or does it change yeah. every it year? It changes or? every year. We usually make between about 10 and 15 um, per year, depending on, like, for example, Rio was more interesting last year because, you know, they end up in the favelas of Brazil, which is in itself a really fascinating story. Um, next year it's Paris, um, underneath the Eiffel Tower, so visually beautiful. Um, so yeah, it depends on when we had, the one in Cape Town that we held was the most successful, that's the documentary that made it to Sundance, um, so yeah. And do the brands exercise any editorial control over the content of the documentaries? They're pretty, um, well, we, we, the way that we work with documentary crews is we really love them to take the creative control. I mean, we, we choose the do documentary crews carefully so that they, you know, are coming with respect for the players and, and an understanding of the emotional journey that they're going through and the psychology of that. Um, you know, so they're not pushing them around and they're not, you know, you know, we've had, we have had a couple of incidents where people have, haven't been aware of the situation they've been in, so they, you know, they gave a camera to a guy who was a crack addict to go and film in a crack den and you know and then they wondered why he then sold the camera um, for crack and you're just like my god we well, thank you we've spent you know 12 months getting him off crack and you've just put him right back where he was so you know it's really really care you know, we have to be careful with the crews that we work with that they're working with us but once we've got the right crews we just we just let them go off and the brands that we work with are pretty much like that as well Nike is very you know, they just want the, the story to be told. Absolutely, we've got a brilliant relationship. And I mean, there's a few things that we have to watch, like, you know, Adidas stripes and things like that. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, apart, because all the teams come in national kit, their own national kit. So, you know, Denmark's an Adidas team, Germany's an Adi team. So, so you just keep the slashes and whoops and jingles and things off the screen. You don't insist they wear different clothes. No, we, um, look, the promo that we made, actually, we, um, we uh, just, taped out the Adidas stripes. We've got, we've got this promo? Yeah, do you Can we cue that promo up? Talented tech team. From street to pitch. Homeless to hero. The power to change. Nations competing for glory in Rio, Brazil. This September, experience the best street football the world has ever seen. The Rio 2010 Homeless World Cup. Watch. Unite, celebrate. Are you in? Go to homelessworldcup.org. Good that promo, isn't it? Mm, really That's good. brilliant. That. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. No. And what's what's brilliant about when you're working with, um, I suppose, you know, a charity, is that we, you know, we actually had a budget of uh, about forty thousand pounds to make that, and um, we ended up with a promo that 
really probably needed a budget of about 200 grand to make that. Um, you know, we had studios chipping in, the studio space, um, you know, the colouring was all given for free, you know, yeah. loads of people contributed. So, um, and then CNN gave us $2 million worth of um, airtime. Yeah, and it was... It'd be hard to say no to, I reckon. <laughs> I don't mean you personally, although I also mean Thank that. you. I mean, the initiative would be hard to say, yeah. actually, no, you're a bit shit. Don't, yeah. don't <laughs> Let's talk to talk. To, oh no! But just before I uh, throw to video, are there any? And this, this, you know, I would imagine, uh, in, in, in deeply inherent within uh, the initiative, lots of sensitivities that have to be certain types of brands you couldn't consider working with. Yeah, we don't work with um, any um, alcohol brands or um, gambling or I mean, no one works with cigarette brands, but any brands where we would put the players in a vulnerable position, you know, many of them are battling alcoholism, so you don't want to be putting Heineken in front of them, or, you know, some of them are homeless due to gambling addictions, so, you know, so we're just sensitive yeah. around that. Vida Virtue would have a uh, few such squeamish <laughs> listeners, I would imagine. I think you're right there, yeah. Okay, well, let's, I mean, just in a little bit more detail, what is Vice as opposed to VBS as opposed to Virtue? What do you... What do you do? And then you've got some got something some to show stuff. us. Yeah, I've got some videos. I think um, what I want to do is we're actually a brand. Vice is a brand. I think I'm the ugly one on this panel, <laughs> by the sounds of it. I'm the one Phil Hicks doesn't like. Um, we've always loved brands at Vice because Vice has always been free. From day one, it's been ad funded, paid for by print advertising. And now VBS, our online TV channel, is completely free. Again, it's paid for by brands. So actually, we like brands a lot, and we embrace them and like working with them. What sort of numbers, clicks, views? That sort of um, thing? What well, are you the to tell us? distribution for the magazine is just under a million now worldwide, and VBS TV is just shy of 10 million worldwide monthly. So it's been growing. Most of our audience is in North America, but we are growing a lot here as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is just give you a little. I've got a few videos. I don't know if I'm going to. I don't know. I might have too much. Just don't play any shot by Kurt. <laughs> Later. Um, so let me play you. This is, I, I guess, I want to play you a video about Vice, about who we are. It's our brand story. I think when you work with brands, you've got to be really respectful of their brand story. It's what they care about. It's about the heritage of who they are. It's like, you know, there's no point going in and trying to pitch your random documentary idea to a brand. I can tell you right now, they want to know that your idea and you understand them and who they are and you can integrate with, with, with their values. So I guess this is our values, this is who we are, this is our history. So here's a little bit about us, I hope, if it plays. Vice magazine started 15 years ago in Montreal, Canada. We quickly became the coolest magazine in the country, but that's like being the coolest magazine in Kansas. We're being read in New York and London, though, and then we got the attention of a crazy nudist billionaire who brought us down to Manhattan for the dot-com revolution. That quickly fizzled out, as did our crazy nudist billionaire. So we moved to Brooklyn, got back to our punk roots, and started global expansion. First we went to England, then to Japan, Scandinavia, Germany, and soon we were in 30 countries. The thing about being in 30 countries is that's a lot of content. We now have 2,500 contributors around the world sending stuff in every month.
What is VBS? It's an online television network, but it's not TV. VBS is music, it's culture, and it's news. We're coming back with the stuff that nobody else has. We're putting it up online. We followed the only heavy metal band in Baghdad. We went to Bolivia. We went to the Philippines. I went to Sudan and snuck into Darfur. We're going to North Korea. We're going all over the place. We're doing music in a different way, like going to the band's practice space, or we have a show called Soft Focus, interviewing bands, much like inside the Actors Studio, but punk. Let's do bands that matter. Let's do the bands you won't see on MTV. But we also do culture. We do Epically Latered, which is a skateboarding show where we follow the skateboarders that the kids really want to see. We shoot it, we cut it, it's up the next day. So there's an immediacy there that you can't get on any other medium. It's democracy in action. It's grassroots. Viva la revolution. Cool. Well, you'd hope that VBS would make a good <laughs> promo, wouldn't you? Old actually, but thank you. Um, so that's us. And what do you do? Um, I make all the videos. Basically, I make all the. I'm a producer by trade, and I've got a marketing background as well. So I, I, I produce a lot of our content in Europe. Um, and so our brand is this what we call the Vice ecosystem. Um, and so we embrace lots of different things. We've got record label, we've got a DVD label, we've got uh, Vicebrand.com, our website. So we've basically got lots of kind of areas that we, we, we work in and also where we can distribute branded content. So I think that's one of the main reasons we've been very successful with brands is that we have a built-in audience and we have a big distribution network and how to reach brands, which is what, what they're very, very interested in. Um, we also, um, I guess I'm going to go on to VBS. VBS... Um, was started in 2007. Spike Jones came to us and he said, why are you guys not making documentaries out of all your stories? You've got an inbuilt development department, you've got a great editorial, go and shoot some stuff. So that's how, how VBS started. And so the guys in, in New York just went, start, got cameras and went and, and started making documentaries. Um, and so we've been continuing to do that. We've now got um, about 250 hours of original content, content we've produced ourselves. Um, I have 10 edit suites in London in our office there. We make things very cheaply. We use our own resources. We have cameras. We have in-house producers. We try and do things you know, as cheaply as possible. And we try and keep, keep the production quick as well, so keep turning around things as fast as we can. Um, is cheap, cheaply as possible an overhead consideration, a margin consideration, or more of a nimbleness? Well, it's a nimbleness as well. I think that you know, I think our style of production is 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 much more um, flexible and nimble than more traditional models from TV. I mean, we have to keep our costs down. We don't have big budgets. We're not a big broadcaster. Um, so we've found solutions, found ways that we can make things cheaply. And one of the things is to cut down on production time. Just get out there, shoot, cut it. You know, it might not be perfectly beautiful, but we just love the story and we want to get it out there. Um, we don't always apply the same that same uh, technique to our branded content, obviously. Um, but here's you know some of the shows that we've we've got on our own channel. We've got about 50 different shows now that we've created ourselves. And what's happening is that um, a lot of the brands that we will I guess we've had a good relationship with brands, like I said, because they've always advertised in the magazine, and then they were buying display advertising for, for, for the websites. And then they started coming to us and saying, you know, we want to engage a bit deeper, we want to do something, we want to do something more. So we said, well, why don't we start doing some series with you and do some branded content series? And so um, it was that that led us to start Virtue, which is Vice's creative agency. Um, it was a way of channeling our experience as a media company, as, as broadcaster, as a, a content producer, to help uh, brands communicate with young consumers. Um, again, touching our network, which is, you know, our demographic is 18 to 34 year olds um, and lots of influencers or whatever, whatever you want to call them, there's some new buzzword. Um, so that's so that's when, yeah, so we set up Virtue and Virtue is now a full service agency. So we've actually got clients that are we're, we're their, that, you know, their only agency. Um, so we do everything from strategy, creative, production, distribution, marketing, research. So yeah, it's getting quite, it's getting quite serious. <laughs> how, <clears throat> how many is Virtue in London? Uh, we've got 10 people full time on Virtue in London now. Good. Yeah. And there's about 23 in New York. So yeah, it's run by um, a, a, a Spencer, who's the founder of Virtue, used to be the head of strategy at Fallon big agency.
Um, and so recently we've been working with loads of big brands and so, I think some of you might, if you know Vice, you might find some of these brands quite surprising um, because they're not necessarily all you know, sports brands and, and skate brands and things like that. We've been working with Intel, who are quite a conservative brand. We've been working with Dell, um, which, is, which is interesting for us. Um, so yeah, so we've been, we've been working with a lot of brands. This, it's been blowing up, up, up actually this year. And this is uh, some of our branded content that we've been doing. So that's, um, that's a, a reel of stuff that I've been producing actually out of the UK, most of that, um, the last 18 months. I've been quite busy. Um, that must feel good watching that. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. I'm proud. I'm actually really proud of the branded content we do. I, I think a lot of people think brands, working with brands is a bit evil, but I'm actually, I love, I love it when you can work with a brand, have a good relationship and create something like you that, yeah. that feels that you're satisfied with. Right, well, a quick, quick show of hands. Uh, branded content, evil? Not evil? <laughs> um, shy, don't know, don't like putting my hand up in public. <laughs> Tessa. <laughs> so no strong feelings there. It's not going to kick off. It's not going to kick off. Okay, either. good. I thought I might get annihilated up here, but no. Because yeah. um, I do think, in my experience, with uh, sometimes documentary makers can be quite, you know, take themselves very seriously and. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, know I'm gonna go, <laughs> which is fine. But I think um, I think when it comes to brand, what what we always try and do is is talk about entertainment rather than this this might get a reaction rather than documentary or factual because in our experience brands are a bit put off by those words because they seem quite serious. I don't know if you've had the. I mean, it might be that you know our brand we are a brand as well. So I think um, I think we try and talk about entertainment and making making uh, fun content rather than necessarily factual which I think can put people off, but mm. anyway. Um, you can try and get um, brands to associate themselves with homelessness, see how yeah. we get on with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Um, so this is a philosophy of virtue. Um, this is what we are telling brands. This is what we, we go into our meetings and we say, look, you guys, you need to um, communicate like modern media companies. We use ourselves as a case study. Um, communicate through content, make your com communication entertainment, create valuable assets that have long tail value. So rather than just make something that lasts for the length of a campaign, start investing in, in you know, similar to with Nike and you, it's like you're making, making things that are gonna last, that are gonna have a bit more depth, that are gonna exist for, have some, some sort of length, you know, exist for a while. Um, and create- How long's a while? Um, well, I mean, I can talk a bit about the motherboard case study. All right, we'll come done. back to we'll come Yeah, back. we'll come back to that. But I mean, it's really asking brands to think about um, building their own VBSs. I mean, that's something that we're, we're doing with lots of brands now. We call it vertical, verticalization, yeah. which is a kind of Americanism. Um, but it's essentially building uh, communities, building platforms, building networks where there's video, there's, there's uh, discussion forums, there's, um, you know, 
everything, lots of assets on there. So it's brands are, have a kind of deeper engagement and they can they can build something that has that can last. And some do. Red yeah, Bull's a pioneer exactly. in this. Exactly, Red Bull's a real pioneer. And in fact, the other guy that was meant to be here, Mark, who runs Relentless. Erasmus. Yeah, Erasmus, they do exactly that. Um, mm. And I think it's where a lot of brands are going now. We're not the only people no. trying to convince brands to do this, but um, they're starting to get it now. And they're like, oh, actually, yeah, why would we spend a million quid on a 30 second spot when we could spend a million quid on an on a, on a, uh, uh, entertainment platform that yeah. could last for a couple of years? Um, and I think that's really what we're trying to encourage brands to do is um, just be, be be a little bit more, more smart with their money and where they invest and, and actually you know, get people to, to like them more. Um, this slide is really boring looking, but the reason I'm... <laughs> just, reason... Just, just, just before we leave that, mm. do, do, do you mind? One of the things, one of the three or four things I've had in my mind that I wanted you to leave with today is that <clears throat> Brands and Factual is not getting money out of Nike to make sure that a protagonist is wearing shoes at a certain point, okay? Mm. It's, uh, if you've been here all week, you'll have hopefully attended some social media discussions, some, uh, some crossover um, discussions, and that way of thinking about the modern media world uh, both should be, and in the instance of uh, Vice and say uh, Red Bull and um, AOL even mm. perhaps, uh, is already the, the game in town. Okay, and um, familiarising yourselves with it <clears throat> by doing some follow-up research after um, after today and you know reading Digital Week and um, whatnot should I hope take the scales off some eyes really to realise that there's a, there's a way for a career to be made sustainable whilst passion projects are developed by a documentary filmmaker. That's why we mm. that's why Jan and I wanted to do this panel today. Yeah, it's very true. Mm. Um, I, I, the reason I was just saying, the reason I, I have this slide in here is because I think one of the things I wanted to talk about today is how when you talk to brands as filmmakers, you need to speak, you need to speak their language. And I think that is something that I wasn't very used to. And I've worked with our strategy team in, at Virtue, and they are amazing at this stuff. And it's all kind of data and it's graphs, and I just go, ugh. But actually, <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it's so important when you go and you deal with brands because they want, they are thinking about ROIs, return of investment. They want to know where this is going to live. They want to know what the, you know, how many clicks it's going to get. They want to know what the results are going to be. You have to do reports for them. You do a branded content series. You have to report on everything. Um, and they, you're speaking to marketing directors or you're speaking to media agencies, and this is the language they speak. And I think that my, you know, something, something I've certainly learned coming from a more creative background is just how important this, I mean, and this slide is exciting for all of us because it's about how video, how important video content is in this new kind of landscape of digital and how everybody loves video, young people, consumers, they care about consumers, they care about selling product, they care about, you know, getting people, influencing people in the market. And I think that making video documentary branded content is all the all you know all of the stats all the analytics are showing that it's incredibly successful so if you can tap into that but in a way that they understand like i just think that sometimes just going in with a creative idea and saying okay like i've got this story i've got this they need you've got to tap into what they're after and they're after results and they're after selling products and you can still have a great project with them and you can still feel fulfilled and it can still be creative, but ultimately they, 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 you know, they care about the bottom line, they care about doing their reports to their marketing directors about how many you know, Nike shoes this is. You know, th well, that's, that's a point. Uh, is a return on investment increased shoe sales? Or is a return on investment a more positive report from a focus group, yeah. say, about the values of the brand? Right. And I think that's a tension that exists at the moment and is slowly tipping. Yeah. Uh, an example is in the next uh, two weeks uh, Virgin Media will decide if um, and the scope of their investment in Virgin Media shorts and mm. young British short for filmmakers should already care about that because it's the best prize in town and the film council is going to be blah blah. Um, and so uh, and the, and a conversation which will be had at senior level is how many subscriptions is this selling? And then other people have to say it's not about that. Mm. It's about people feeling warmly about you. And how do you quantify that? And I believe you can, actually. Yeah. 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 Oftentimes, these brands 
have ring fenced these pots of money. Often these these, these marketing budgets too are, are the are the research and development. Yeah. We don't want to get left behind, so we've got a we've got a couple of hundred grand every year here at Nike UK to just chuck at stuff in case you know. So we don't want to miss out. You know, they're, well they're doing it, so we need to as well. That money is effectively already spent. And if then you or your agency or your producer or whatever um, zips up a nice looking PDF with some, um, you know, a nice rap report, you know, I think that's... Yeah. yeah. I mean, they love video. That's the best thing. Yeah. They absolutely love video. They love documentary. They love telling stories. And I think that's, for me, really exciting is that we often will go into a pitch, go into a meeting, and what they want is stories that they want to find stories and our medium is predominantly documentary um, and they want something that reflects their brand values or that's something that they can they can hook onto that's what they're looking for it doesn't have to be about how great you know wearing how great sh running is in these shoes it's about something that it, that communicates what Nike stands for yeah. and I think if you can if you can think about that when you're developing ideas you can think about have brands in mind almost that you think would be you could attach that with I think that's a good place to start mm -hmm. um, so yeah and then I was going to talk about this uh, project we've been working on for a couple of years with Dell uh, called Motherboard but maybe we'll come back come to, back to that yeah. um, one of the people who's not here with a sprung head or something Mark he works for a company called Erasmus um, and I'm going to give a rather clumsy quick um, snapshot of that because it would have been a very uh, would have been a lovely project of unpicked and I'll tell you a few words about it, you'll jot some words down and go and do a bit of research, but it's fascinating. It's a little evolution of the Red Bull model, really. Red Bull spent a fabulous amount of their um, price per unit in marketing. It's 50% the highest for any brand in the world. That's how they can afford, for example, Formula One team, um, or two Formula One teams. Um, Erasmus decide to release a fizzy drink into a crowded market. And they sit around and they think about, well, how are we going to do that? Are we going to get pictures of celebrities drinking it? You know, are we going to uh, you know, sample the Oscars, put things in goodie bags, and all that old-fashioned way of getting products going? And they worked backwards and started their marketing campaign for their fizzy drink uh, before they'd made any of their fizzy drink, let alone shipped it. It's in stores now. You see the little bolt things called relentless, like little re uh, Red Bull rivals. Um, and it's got this kind of gothic type face and it's all very skate. So what they did was um, commissioned and made a, a series of extreme surfing uh, documentaries. And then they built a web platform and a game and let people just go and find this awesomeness, okay? Like people who, uh, they figured, the people who we want to drink are fizzy drink are the sort of people who will watch that kind of film. So they built that first, created the brand, and then released the drink on top of it. Um, such is the world in which you live. Um, so that's what Relentless would have been, um, would have been talking about. And that was a cinematic release. Yeah. yeah uh, bought, went and bought the... Did they? Yeah. But I mean, the tri the, how that actually does then work mm -hmm. is the film was good. It was actually a very yeah. exciting film, if that's, that's your kind of film. Um, let's talk about boot. Let's talk about Absolute. What can you tell us about uh, what Protein did with Absolute? Um, well, we did all. And talk a bit closer to the microphone. We did the digital campaign for I Am Here, which is the Spike Jones Absolute Vodka film. Um, and it's a short robot romance funded by Absolute. Uh, there's absolutely no branding in it at all. And um, it's a really nice film that stands alone without um, without the brand. So I personally would have watched it anyhow. Um, and it was, we did the advertorial, um, the paid placements, and it went out to the seeding, our seeding blast, which is over 3,000 blogs. Um, and it was a really successful did campaign. we have it on our front page? Or yes, you did. Yeah. And it looked great, mm. and it looked great on... Spike Jones on shooting people, awesome. So people were happy to place it um, mm. on their blogs because it looked like a really gorgeous piece of filmmaking. Um, and I think worked really well as a branded content. And look, whose big idea was that? Absolute. Absolute. Absolute's agency? Well, I, the, um, Spike Jones, Spices? I heard, 
already had the vision in his head and when Absolute approached him, he was enabled, you know, he had... Oh, cool, here's the money to make this film yeah. we've been wanting to make for a while. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you can get away with that, though. There's not many yeah. people that can get away with <laughs> no. that. No. Um, I think it was through Mother. Yeah, it came through Mother. Yeah. But, I mean, it was a similar thing with Darren that he, who made the Cadencia film for Nike, that was something that he had wanted to make anyhow, that was facilitated and sort of fitted in at the right time with Nike's marketing strategy and World Cup lead-up. So, you know, those possibilities are there that, as Vida was saying, if you kind of have in your mind um, a way that can reflect what a brand's trying to say or, you know, you can facilitate ideas that you've got anyhow um, in, in, in a way that's positive for both the brand and the filmmaker and becomes like an equal and tasteful relationship. I think that's when branded content works the best. And when it becomes something that, certainly for us, that our network want to feature rather than exactly. um, want to feature and want to watch, regardless of it being an advert. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I think you have to approach any branded content projects thinking, would I want to watch this? Is this something, you know, you've got to keep kind of, we try as much as we can to keep our integrity when we do branded content and say, would, you know, we use our, our brand as a leverage for a lot of the, the, the branded content that we do. So we say, is this going to work? Can we, can this fit on Vice? Can it fit yeah. on VBS? Um, you've got to, you've got to, you know, push back sometimes when it's becoming tasteless, which tr trust me, it can be. Um, and then try, you know, try and keep your keep strong and yeah. say, like, let's like, tone down that. You don't need that product shot. Seriously, you don't need that in there. Yeah. Um, and kind of, which is, you know, what people have been doing in advertising. Yeah. That's always been a bit of a battle. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important to talk about partnerships with brands as well. Um, I, you know, I think that again, saying we need a sponsor for our film is not something that they like to hear. Um, they like to you to say we are looking for a partner for this really exciting project and we, you're our first choice and because of this and because of this is what your brand means and this is what our film means and I think you have to um, avoid yeah just avoid kind of using this like a sort of tag or a sponsorship yeah. label. Is Emily James here? <laughs> I flatter myself. Um, Emily uh, directed uh, a documentary which played in the festival yesterday. She's a British documentarian called Just Do It, Get Off Your Ass and Change the World. She had a uh, couple of hundred hours of um, tapes that she's been following these really quite hardcore climate change activists who like hang themselves off Parliament House and you know stuff like that. And she made this film and she ran a crowd funding campaign. Um, and her target was 20 grand. And in the meantime, she went to Lush and said, I'm doing this, this, this uh, crowdfunding campaign, match it, and you'll go out on this many emails, and this is where your brands will appear. And they went, yeah, sure, 20 grand. Now think of the difference that 20 grand has made to that film, the difference it's made to getting it onto the screen. So that's another way of mm. thinking mm. about things as well. And if you say, you know, I want you to advertise around my movie or sponsor. No, let's work together. Yeah. Pick the right person, have the right approach, bone up on your case studies a little bit, see the sorts of things that, that have worked. It doesn't all have to be tip jar, nickel and dime, crowdfunding stuff, although all that's, all that's great. It tends to be a bit sort of butt-clenchingly liberal, all that mm. stuff anyway, and your film might not be. Um, but uh, think about where it's going to end up as well. I think that's the other thing is the reach of the project. Um, it's it's a marketing activity for them. It comes under their marketing budget. So um, they, you know, it's not just about making a great film. It's about what other assets can you create out of this film. You know, what one of the things we do with our with our clients is we create above the line marketing assets out of documentaries. So we've done a project with Palladium recently, which is a, a, a shoe part of K Swiss. It's a, a boot a boot company. And um, we made a, a series with them called Uneven Terrain, where we explored hidden places was kind of the gist of it. And then we, took, we used still photography from that, those shoots, and they made that their above the line campaign, in store, everything. So if you can kind of be creative about what else you could offer them apart from just the film, like the other assets and where it can live and who, you know, communities that are going to be excited about it and pick it up. Uh, organically rather than you forcing them pl to place it. I think mm. um, 
I think when you approach brands and you've thought about the, the marketing strategy with, that, with them in mind, I yeah. think that can help a lot to get... Take, ta and taking that way and thinking to even almost inscrutable lengths, um, in this very room uh, a year ago I did a training day called Digital Boot Camp and we had a guest <coughs> presentation from a Salford-based film and media company called Future Artists. Future Artists, very worth... You'll remember, won't you? Yeah. Um, they start with what they think the brand wants and is trying to get done in the next year, and they build their crossover and film platforms backwards. So they don't say, here's my two-year-old skateboarding documentary. You'll, you, you'll, you'll want to be involved in that now-finished film, won't you? Too late. They start by networking and getting in the heads of people with some of this R&D money or social outreach money, usually actually social outreach money, and then they build their project backwards from that. So it's funded before they, before they shoot it. Um, you know, they're, they're really cool. They're very young and uh, uh, digitally um, savvy as well. Now, what else are we going to talk about before we throw it open to questions? We need to talk about Range Rover. Do you want to talk about Range Rover? Um, and then, Kat, I want you to talk about in a bit more detail uh, your strategy for actually deploying the film. So have a little think about that while we talk about Range Rover. Um, well, as I said earlier, uh, often we get briefs in from clients and we respond to them how we think would best fit, which increasingly is becoming um, with film. So with Range Rover, we did a big event in Paris and we made a film, um, which the client was very happy with. It was to launch their younger, cooler, model um, and we did a kind of 360 campaign where we uh, produced the whole event, did featured profiles of artists, um, did really amazing installations in Paris um, with the sort of best Parisian artists that we Can we look at it? Have we got anything to look at? Yeah, um, Jan, can we show, it's just the beginning of the showreel or... Oh, okay, no we can't. Oh, well you've ruined everything. <laughs> Is it, on the, is it on Protein's website? Um, it's, it's on Protein's Vimeo. Thank you. Go on. Save the day. Um, and we were street artists a second ago when I interrupted you. Yes. And we created a film and the film went viral, went on their website, went out again to our blogs, to our network. And yeah, they were very happy, the client. And we were very happy because we had, once again, nice content to give to our partners and to put on our reel. Yeah. Um, that was more of a promotional video than real branded content in terms of we filmed the event that we made for them. Yeah. So Protein works across quite a few different projects like that. Um, but it's still an example of nice filmmaking that was facilitated by a brand. Great. So. <coughs> Um, uh, with a, with a um, um, marketing strategy consideration about how you deploy your documentaries, do you aim for them to, you know, just live on YouTube or? No, we um, each uh, uh, documentary crew that we that we work with, um, one of the, you know, the selection criteria, if you like, is um, that you know the connection to either their national. TV station or their their plan for um, distribution through film festivals, things like that. So, um, whether or not we will give a commission to a documentary crew will be determined on their sort of connections to their national broadcaster, right. basically, or whatever. So, you know, when we, I mean, we were looking for a global uh, to do a global film that you know tracked five players and there was a lot of interest in that we you know we maybe looked at 15 crews before we chose the one that we knew we would get it to Sundance yeah. so that we could then get the doc the uh, feature film. You knew they would get it to Sundance? Yeah, so you, you just, knew they'd made something worthy of Sundance's consideration yeah, or would definitely get in? Or? Well we knew that they had the con the, 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 um, the contacts and that they, had, they were feisty enough and that you know they had the will kind of thing and um, they also sold it to ESPN. Right. So um, you know, but normally Do you retain all the rights in these films? What if, they, what if it does get a nice, well-paid-for transmission? Well, we, um, we negotiate a, um, 
you know, contract Are you prepared with them. To share <laughs> those templates well, with us. Yeah. Or? So the the um, we we I think we made a really great negotiation with with um, kicking it that made it to Sundance and got sold to ESPN. So, you know, we actually um, sold the rights to the global, you know, the global distribution rights for a hundred thousand dollars, which for you know for us that gives us a lot of money to invest in helping yep. more players change their lives and. And for me, it led me to Sundance, which was a personal, you know, ambition, and a hotel room with Colin Farrell. So really, that was yeah. Hotel room with Colin Farrell, <laughs> and then what happened? <laughs> and then we negotiated the drama motion picture, which we're now making with Film Four and um, Blueprint, um, who made Welcome to Sarajevo and um, In Bruges. So that was always the intention: was to get to Sundance so that we could make it, you know. Into you know further infiltrate the film market if you like. Yeah. So yeah, we I mean we really respect the story and we love the story, but we're pretty ambitious with where we want it to get as well. So you know we've been on most national TV stations from SBS in Australia to TV2 in Denmark to SABC in South Africa. So we always um, make sure that we have a good distribution with the documentary crew as well. And are you in charge of the sales strategy for the films? Um, we sometimes we have a joint relationship where, because obviously, one of the assets that we have as a charity is that we um, can get perhaps infiltrate distribution that you wouldn't be able to if you were a commercial organisation, like with CNN, for example. Or, yeah. um, so we sometimes do that together, um, but we mainly let the crew get on with it. To be honest. Yeah. Right. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to throw it open for a few questions. But Vida, can you? Um, canter through uh, motherboard. I will. I think I've, I've chosen this one because it's actually probably my favourite branded content project that we've, I've worked on at, at Vice. Um, I, what happened was uh, Dell came to Virtue and said they were having a bit of an identity crisis um, <laughs> because they used to be really cool and no one liked them anymore. Um, <laughs> and obviously with the you know, onslaught of Apple. So we, we did some insight into them and lots of sort of research and strategy and uh, went back to them saying, you guys should just embrace your inner geek, because actually, it's, geeks are really cool. There's lots of, you know, Spike Jones is a geek. You know, there's so many bands out there who are really geeky, and we said, like, that's what you should do. You should, you should try and um, sort of embrace that and, and create a, a, a content platform, um, because we looked around, and there wasn't that many people doing good um, technology, science, culture content online. I mean, there's shows like Horizon or there's The Gadget Show, but there wasn't that much out there which was like good documentaries that were about the culture of technology and the stories and the characters behind technology. Obviously, technology being their sort of hook. Um, so we decided to create um, a show on VBS called Motherboard, and uh, the, it was an alternative um, science and technology show. So we incubated this show on, on Motherboard for a while, and it became really, really popular. And then we launched motherboard.tv, so we created a brand with Dell. Um, You're right. <laughs> um, so yeah, we created, <laughs> we created a brand uh, with Dell, um, and yeah, it's a, it's a platform. It's a ver it's a ver it's what they what we call a content vertical. So it's a living, breathing. It's video. It's a community, um, and it's uh, it's become really popular and quite organically as well because we haven't really done any big advertising around it, and um, people have found it. Um, so we yeah we all of the video content on there we've we've produced ourselves with the help of yeah. So it's actually useful <laughs> is one of the things yeah. it's doing, as yeah. well as being diverting and watch it while your boss isn't looking, it's useful, like tech-related news? Yeah, there's tech-related tech news, there's, um, there's some quite sort of intelligent, deep documentaries into, you know, s different sort of, not just weird science-y characters, but stories, um, stem cell, in, you know, there's a piece about stem cells. Jan did a film for us, didn't you, Jan? <laughs> for Motherboard. And Nick Armark, who's another guy who's uh, another Sheffield a regular, he did a film about Stellock, the guy who's got an ear in his arm. You might have seen Ooh. that in the uh, <laughs> in the trailer. Oh um, so yeah, I think it's you know we 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 basically did a deal with them where we'd put a new piece of documentary content out on the platform every week. 
it's going to be. Um, so those pieces range from five minutes to 25 minute pieces. Um, and in fact, some of them we're now going to sort of blow up into feature docs because we've got great characters and we've got enough material. So we're looking at doing that. Um, so yeah, it's just a, a kind of... On mobile as well? Sorry? On mobile, as an iPad and everything yeah, as well? Yeah, you can, you can download some of it for mobile as well. Um, and then we've got this community which is becoming really strong. Um, and you can become a motherboard member and a member of staff, so you can post your own content on there. We still kind of edit that a bit, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, like I said, it's becoming something very natural that people have engaged with. Nice numbers. Um, yeah, another one of my special Very parts. nice numbers. Um, so obviously when you look at these numbers, uh, and Dell haven't really spent any money actually marketing, we just put the platform up marketed it through Vice and put it on some, some of our syndication sort of websites. They look at this and, and they, I mean, they invested a reasonable amount of money in it, but How compared much? to, oh, cheeky. Um, <laughs> Roughly, show us your hands. Um, well, it's a three year deal and it's, it's, uh, it's worth several million dollars. Um, but that's nothing compared to what they spend on marketing. No, you know, of course. It's like a tiny they're, drop they're, in the ocean in their a marketing moth. budget. Um, so yeah, it's been going really, really well. Um, and you have to, are you overseeing all the content for that as well? The European content, yeah. yeah. Not when the, do you sleep, Vida? <laughs> <don't, I don't. laughs> um, and I think that this is, again, going back to what we would, I, I opened with, which is, um, you know, it's about, it's about creating these networks um, and, uh, you know, how you can, how brands can do more than just a, ca just a regular campaign. Um, so yeah, and, and youth markets, our, our audience certainly are responding really, really well. Yeah. And in fact, we retain all the rights as well to motherboards, so we own it entirely. Wow. So yeah, if, they, if they decide they don't want to spend any money anymore, we just shop it around. Um, so yeah, again, it's down to, it's not about fleeting impressions. It's the opposite of a banner buy. You know, this is all the kind of things that we've been talking to brands about is doing more. You've got to do more than... than yeah. When you're with you, when you're talking digital, um, so yeah, that's. The you're well, very welcome, Vida. Thank you. <laughs> um, I I'm going to take a couple of questions, and then I'm going to we're going to play the special comedy treat. But you'll tell when I'm ready for that because I'll I'll segue into it really elegantly. Um, questions? There's a microphone. Tessa, have you learned anything today? Good. No, it's all right. Just want you can just nod. Tessa comes to everything I do, it's a bit creepy. <laughs> Vita, can you give Tessa a job? She's really good. Okay. She really is, I mean it. There you go, Tessa. That was worth a blush. Any questions at all? There we go, right over there. Can you put up the last screen for a second? The one with thanks? No, not the one with actual information. Okay, I have a, I have a question. Um, it's very exciting approaching brands and stuff. Um, if you have some specific ideas, is it worth trying to approach them directly or going through some companies like you guys? Big to, question. Because you have, you know, direct access to them on a regular basis, so... Right, what we do, I'm sorry, I didn't explain. What I do with questions is I'm going to take two or three, jot them down, then we'll address them. So how to approach. Okay, I've got that. Now, this lady in the green coat. Hi there, I'm Leslie Lee, and um, uh, I was looking forward to actually seeing Andrew Crichton here, actually, tonight, because he's great. He's, he's in not, LA, oh, pitching, lucky pitching dude. random content. Cool. But um, <laughs> Vice, of course... One of the things Vita didn't say was that with create, with Intel, um, in the face of the uh, iPod being uh, iPad being released, of course the the, the Creators Project uh, series of gigs. Of course, I'm here was was filmed there, uh, was shown there, and we were playing this game. We were trying to figure out, watching the credits roll by on that Spike Jones film. How how much was the budget on that? Looking at that, could you could you actually tell us that? Do you think, or or is that secret? So. The absolute project. Yeah. Okay. One more? Yep, yes please. I'm sorry, just wait for the mic because we're recording the session. So what is the takeaway for uh, independent filmmakers who would like to approach 
brands and work with them directly. Is that even possible? Okay. When, you know, a, a film that has a built-in audience, that has developed a following even before it's been released. How are you going... To, well, let's go backwards from where we started. How are you going to parlay what has been shown up on the screen and sent into the microphones today directly into uh, employment will vary wildly depending on the sorts of films you make and your own uh, ambitions. I would have thought the easiest way, and then we'll get Vida to answer this, but I'll, I'll have a crack at it. I would have thought the easiest way for the Vidas to give you work is if the Vidas are already giving you work. Um, and the way to get the Vidas to give you work is to probably have a reasonably proven track record doing agency work. And the way to uh, get agency representation is to win shit. Really? Like, make films and win and get noticed and, and signed. Um, you riddle me that, Vita, and also say, do you answer the question, do you like people coming to uh, say, here's me, here's what I do? Yeah, I love it. I mean, I'm always open to people pitching, um, pitching ideas, and what I do is, for VBS, I don't have big budgets. You know, we work, like I said earlier, we work, for VBS, we work with pretty small budgets for our own content. But if someone comes to me with an idea that I think I could pitch to a brand, um, and I think we're already having a conversation with a brand and it would be a good fit for one of our clients or somebody we work with, then I'd be more than happy um, to take that to the table. The, the problem that we would face is rights over that project because um, Vice has, uh, you know, Vice is very adamant about retaining rights to everything we produce. It's something that we've always done. Um, the project I'm doing with Red Bull at the moment, I've just, we've just produced, a, it's launching on Monday, we've just produced a series with them about the studio, their music studio with loads of big music producers like Mark Ronson and Andrew White and people like that. Now that's the first time I've worked with a brand who is so savvy that they want to do a co-production deal. So, you know, actually, most of the brands... Is anyone here from a brand? Is anyone a marketing director from one of the brands I work with? Yeah. <laughs> anyone, from, <laughs> anyone from Nike? God. Um, they, um, I think halfway through answering your question. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm always open, but I can't necessarily promise that you're, what the rights deals that you would get would be. Um, I think it I think, uh, depends on who the brand is, depends on how we, if, whether we produce the project with you as a director. Um, it really depends on, on what it is, uh, I think. Is that all right? I think the, I th the other thing That's I was going to say is that it's good to work with, me, if, even if it's not someone like us, what we are is a, a media company. So getting a media partner on board is another approach that you could do. I mean, I, I'm just saying that if you have a film already with a community that's built in, because it's about a subject that lots of people are interested in, and then you can come to the table with a media partner, you know, not necessarily Vice, yeah. but somebody else. So I've got 20,000 Yeah, and models. then they, and they, they're going to support the film. That's even more reason for a brand to get excited about yeah. it. But it is, it is, I'm not going to lie, it's really quite hard to get close to brands, you just as independent filmmakers. Yeah. I think um, go, getting a meeting with the guy that actually makes the decision or the woman who actually makes the decisions about the marketing budgets. Um, I think you kind of need to go in with somebody who's already got that relationship um, and it will help a lot. But it's not impossible. No. You know, um, Darren Bartlett, for example, with Cadencia, he got that straight from Nike, didn't it? Yeah. It wasn't through an agency. Yeah, yeah I just wanted to say, you know, we've got, um, you know, if you're approaching issues-based organisations like ours, we get a lot of crews coming to us and saying we've got this idea and can we work with Nike and can we you know work with UEFA and can we work with Vodafone and that kind of really pisses us off it's like you know if you're going to an issues based organisation then you, you're going there because you want to work with them mm. so um, you know if you you know just bear, in, bear that in mind if you're pitching to you know crews like you know Oxfam or, or you know or Homeless World Cup so you know you, like we worked, we did a great project with Buzz Films, which is you should be clear as well. if you're doing your research, you know? If, yeah. you're, if you've gone deep into the cooperative pay for a lot of film, right? Exactly. So if you go in, onto their website, and it's very clear what we want, how we like to be approached. Do not send this. Please include a, you know, self-addressed, blah, yeah. blah, don't call us, we'll call you. No, it's all, it's all on there. Yeah. If they're used to working with filmmakers, it's all... It's yeah, all we want to know That's that good people want to work with us and not Nike. Right. Um, on, I've got a, uh, actually on the, my notes, um, I would say if you wanted to research 
um, working, you know, for money for NGOs and brands, and th those kind of NGOs, NGOs and charity brands, are the best place to start your research. It's such a shame that lady had to leave. This is such a nugget of gold that she's going to miss out on. And halfway through us answering her questions, you never know some people. I would research uh, BritDoc, okay? Um, they, that stands, that's short for the Channel 4 British Documentary Film Foundation. They have core funding from Channel 4. They're essentially Channel 4's... Channel 4 doesn't really develop documentary. It just commissions it and acquires it. Um, but it doesn't want to not develop it, so it outsources. And BritDoc is essentially the third-party, not-for-profit uh, documentary development department of Channel 4. Um, and until recently, the lion's share, and they, you know, they exec produce, they'll do some, some completion funding and they'll, or they'll give you some money through their grant schemes to go to fly there and film that. Um, then lately, they did a very big deal indeed uh, with Puma, uh, like millions of dollars, um, and Puma hand out different sized uh, chunks of cash depending on what your needs are and everything, Puma Creative. Uh, it's called, and is truly groundbreaking in this country. It's not at all groundbreaking in America. It happens all the time uh, in America, but it's truly groundbreaking uh, here. Where a and I, mean, I mean, I guess it's also it stops Puma being hassled, pestered uh, mm. by you know 200 filmmakers a month. They can just say to do BritDoc, what should we do? And BritDoc say you should do that, 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 and that, and that, and then we'll guarantee that the right projects are getting made and everything. If you'd like to know more about BritDoc, come in an hour to the BritDoc bar. Um, where there's pub quiz hosted by me. You might have had enough of me um, by then. But anyway, we are, there is a pub quiz, and all the BritDoc people will be there. That bar is in Penelope's, which is sort of next door and kind of underneath the Odeon. Um, just to have... Right. No. Um, but there'll be hundreds of... Um, libertarians smoking outside anyway, so you'll see it easily. Um, Relentless I talked about. Um, one thing I said that I wouldn't talk about, and I do want to talk about quickly, because we've now alluded to uh, agencies kind of getting cut out of the equation and filmmakers having a relationship with brands themselves. Um, on a um, more atomised um, scale, so not with the budgets of uh, Cadencia, um, but also a far, number, a far greater number of filmmakers are starting to build careers um, and that starts by winning a MoFilm short film upload competition, and they can be factual uh, or, f or fiction. The brands don't care. You're just making a 90-second ad for a brand. Um, they send, MoFilm team picks them, sends them to the brand. The brand goes, that one wins. And that what you win uh, is you know, some money and a trip to a film festival and everything. But you probably win a career if you win MoFilm. You know, Nokia will then go, I want that guy to do another one and another one and another one. Um, so check those out um, through our site or just straight to um, straight to MoFilm, Mo Mobile Film, MoFilm, and, uh, and and companies like uh, Babelgum too um, realise um, the potency of video content and indeed documentary uh, video content and are starting to now attract um, advertisers um, to have for, well it's display advertising really. Don't show Babelgum that slide, I would say. Um, but, and also they, uh, our ultimate ambitions will be to get shorts onto mobiles. And a very famous, do you like my segue? American director has the following to say in regards to films on mobile phones. Now, if you're playing the movie on a telephone, you will never in a trillion years experience the film. You'll think you have experienced it, but you'll be <clears throat> cheated. It's a, such a sadness that you think you've seen a film on your fucking telephone. Get real. Yeah, and well done on coming up with the idea for this panel. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. Please join me in thanking Bridie Woodward, Cat Biles and Vita Toombs.